Bang, we in. Yep, that's a good fish. That's a beauty. This is online. Hopefully this fish eats it. Bang, and there we go. Yep. Bang, that's a good fish. Yep, boom. Howdy gang, this is the outside. Welcome to another video. I had a thought the other day. I haven't been fishing in months. So I thought I'd better do something about it. So I've dusted off a little bit of gear and just come down to one of my local creeks. Just have a bit of a play around with the nymphing rod. Now once again, I'm not going to get into this big back and forth about fly fishing stuff. Some people who watch this will, will be into fly fishing. Others who watch it are probably watching more for the running content. But once again, I've said it before, it just takes you to such lovely, natural, calming environments. And I got a day off today, so that's what I thought I probably needed. Now there's three main ways that you can actually fly fish or that are practical for fly fishing these days. People fish with a dry fly which floats on the surface and trout come up to the top and eat it. People might hedge their bets, have a dry fly on the top and might sink a slightly heavier fly that sinks, known as a wet fly, underneath that dry fly. So they've got one on the top and one down sort of maybe a foot, two foot below the surface. That way if the fish are coming to the top, they might hit the top one. If they're a bit lower, they might be attracted by the bottom one. Then there's pretty much straight nymphing, which is what I'm going to do today. Now it's a technique, people call it different names. I won't split hairs, there's slight differences, but it's called check nymphing or euro nymphing, straight line nymphing. It goes by a number of different names, but the basic principle is very similar. Essentially you have a straight line down to a nymph, which is a type of fly, which is usually weighted with a little bead on the head. Now that sits below the surface. Now you can control how far below the surface it sits by basically lowering your rod and letting more line in or, or lifting up to let it out. And the difference with this method is there's no dry fly floating on the top acting like a float, like an indicator. It is pretty much up to you to keep that line straight. And what people usually do is have some sort of coloured line, a coloured fluorocarbon line in the middle, about, about a foot in length, which acts as a bit of a visible indicator. So if you see any movement, if that kind of dips when you're holding the line straight, and I'll try and get some footage of me actually doing this so it makes some sense. But if that dips, you strike and hopefully you've got a fish or maybe it's hit a rock or a snag or something. So this water's looking okay today. I'm standing right beside it now. It's a slow sort of a trickle, but should be enough moving water to uh, have a little bit of a luck. So I'll pick the sections I'm going to fish because I'm just fishing with this, you know, this, this single rod, this single method today. I'm not carrying two different rods rigged up differently. So let's give it a go, see what we can find, hopefully get some good footage for you. Oh, got to start somewhere. There we go. Didn't take long. They just love this method. It's it's really quite nuts. Tiny fish. But that's cool. It'll be a brown trout. And naturally recruited, I'd say. So. Little brown trout. Fly comes out, all too easy. And there's a little guy. Beautiful. And you go, little buddy. Off you go. Go and grab a touch. I'll see you again. So I'm hoping my vision comes up well. But you should be able to see that coloured line and then I've got a litre below that which is around about six feet long so it's really very finicky little water so I don't need it to be too long 
and it's that indicator that pink and yellow line there there we go bang oh no sick okay it's a southern stick fish very common in these waters yeah so that indicator if i keep my line straight if i see a, a bit of a jolt on that it's going to be one of a couple of things stick fish maybe or a real fish or it just means my fly is hitting the bottom hitting a rock and i can cope with that too general rule is if you see it go tight you see it dip you strike at it and it's not traditional fly casting this is all fluorocarbon line so it's basically like just fishing line and i'm just flinging it out there essentially using the weight of that bead on the end of the fly so it's like super light almost sort of lure fishing to be frank Boom. Another little bloke. Ripping little river fish. Always really, really happy to play along. And always keeps things from getting boring. There we go, hooks out. Little bloke. So I've just changed that fly again. Just want to try a few different fly patterns. What I am using today though is a single fly. With this method, often people will use two nymphs underneath. So I've got this one down on the very point and often you might have one, maybe two foot up the line, depending on where you're fishing. Heavy one at the bottom, lighter one at the top, bit of a dropper. So you can hedge your bets, double your chances. Yes, a little boy, I'll bring him back this way. Oh, active. Oh, didn't get him in the net. Where are you? There we go. There we go. I'll leave that rod there. Another active little brown trout. Really can't complain, they just keep on coming. Pops out, barbless hooks are great. Love little fish. Beautiful. In you go, buddy. Hi again gang, so as a recap, I had to cut that session a little bit short, the weather kind of beat me and to be honest the water levels were pretty low and probably not conducive to doing a bit of nymphing, which is what I wanted to practice. I got a couple of fish but then the rain hit and the weather got kind of gnarly. But getting back into the groove did whet the appetite and I jumped on another stream a couple of days later. So check this bit out. Brown trout, lively conditioned little fish, small waterway. Beautiful. Off you go, buddy. Right, in you go. You caught up in a reed. 
There you go, you're free of it. Off you go. Beautiful, good condition. So it was a nice condition fish. Probably just over a pound. Nice little dry fly eat. Middle of the day, beautiful spring weather. Absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we'll find a few more as we go. And lovely little brown trout from an undisclosed location. Lovely little fish. In you go, buddy. Straight back in the drink. Having a lovely day. Going well. And they're good size little fish for the size of the waterway too, so not gonna to give too much away, but what a spot. Up you come. Get up. Up there is a pretty nice looking fish. Goffed that little hair and copper like it was going out of fashion. There we go, nice little long fish. Away they go. hell okay when you're not trying look what happens oh there's a big fish there too might be able to might be able to double up here if we move this fish back Barbless hook straight out. That's why I use them. And we'll back into the muddy water. Now, do we target the next one on you? Or do we go back and get the dry rod? Oh, I think we just keep going with nymph. It's all good practice. It's terrible. It's not the right kind of nymph in water, but anyway. And again, boom. So I think we've got the whatever the technique now. Spit it. There we go. Flies out. Got a little fish. All right. Yeah, nice. Oh, spat it. I was very slow on that one. So that point being conservative, though, you've got to have a crack. So if you've got fish, 
right up against the blackberry. You're not going to catch it unless you have a go. And you risk catching the blackberry. But that's all right. This is online. Hopefully this fish eats a bang. And there we go. Yeah. Oh, and he's weighted me. Clever fish. Very, very clever fish in here. Yes, there is a fish up further. Let's go and try and catch that one. pretty bright we should be able to see that fish that just rose up there bang not a bad fish actually now he's coming straight at me he's going to want to go straight for the weed there we go. you do have to be quick with them because otherwise they will go straight in that weed Little brown trout. See if we can shake that fly free. There you go, flies out. Nice little fish. Off you go. Cool. Let's turn the tables a little bit. They were winning. Hopefully we can start to win a bit. Okay, this is a lovely little glide. I reckon there'll be a few good fish in here. Probably wouldn't mind getting in the back section with the nymph rod too, but... Oh, there's one I've spooked. This just looks too good not to get into, but back casting is going to be a challenge. But now we should almost have enough... Not that cast. Bang! That's a good fish. Oh, they're just ravenous in here. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. We'll get into the net soon. Because he is right in the current. Come on. He come from a mile away to absolutely inhale that. Another ripper. Just get you. Need to get that fly out. Just falls out. Beautiful. That's, that is the joy <laughs> of using those bubble hooks. They just fall straight out. That's great. Okay. Put him. Come here, little dude. Okay. Slippery little sucker. There we go. Another nice little fish. Beautiful little river fish. Up you go, buddy. Don't tell your mates. Don't go that way. Uh, another one like rising. I'd be very surprised if there's not a couple of dozen fish just in this small 25 meter long run. Oh, that is a big fish. He wants the dragonfly though. Does he want a small dry fly? We might have to go to something that's gonna be a little bit more attractive for him. See my dry fly because the sun's gone. I just hope the fish can. Well, now I can see it. Bang! That's a small fish, ain't that? control this fish really quickly when it eats and I think it probably will eat but it's a damn good fish here we go now we're on bang we in yep that's a good fish that's a beauty okay this is a better one we'll get him to net as quickly as we can before he gets into that current there we go 
That's how we do it. All right. Now that is the big fellow who decided to jump around and chase a few dragonflies. Okay, he's absolutely engulfed that fly. But that just falls out because there's no bub. Perfect. Now that is a lovely river fish. And there's a river from whence he came. Absolutely beautiful. Get him back in. Look at that. Plenty of kick. Doesn't get a hole stuck better than that. Yep, boom. There couldn't not be a fish in there willing to eat a nymph. It just simply wasn't going to happen. Oh, oh, he's dumped me. Come on, back here you come. Ah, oh, they're just such strong fish in here. There we go. It's only a fairly little bike, but it's just so strong. All right. Okay, fly, are we out? No, fly not out yet. Because he's absolutely annihilated it. Okay, there you go. Up you go, see Very good. Bang. Keep him up, keep him up. And that was interesting because I actually took my eyes off that which wasn't great fishing but keep out of the sticks oh and he's long range release okay I'm good with that boom ah may not have felt it we may still be in the game here. Might have been a very small fish, I think. Yes. Oh, is he gone? Downstream you go, go around there and come to me. Good lad. <sighs> Another beautiful little river trout. Corner of the mouth, hopefully. They just keep on keeping on. They're just uh, lovely fish. All in good condition. A lot of them are a little bit long, but they're not skinny. So just a nice little fish. Back you go. Off like a shot. Still hanging downstream. Well, that was a couple of really great days fishing. The first, obviously, cut short a little bit by weather and a bit limited by me, probably, just wanting to try and practice my nymphing. The water, whilst in patches it was suited to it, it wasn't fully suited to it for the whole time. So it was a little bit here and there, bit hit and miss. So I probably put all my eggs in one basket and probably should have done that. The second water, hopefully you really enjoyed that footage. The fish were really, really on. It's a high population of fish and I thoroughly enjoyed it. On the second water, I carried both rods. So I had the opportunity to fish with a dry fly and also do a little bit of nymphing. I'd probably say about 80% to 20%. Whilst the footage should cover exactly kind of what I was doing, particularly on the second water, it wasn't traditional nymphing water. So I was kind of just making do, but managed to catch some fish too. Running through the way I set up my rig for my nymphing, it's generally just a small click reel. It's got some line on there, which is essentially nymphing line. 
but it's not really tapered. It's a straight line and you hardly use it. You generally run a whole lot of fluorocarbon down to a clear section and then down to what I spoke about during the video, an indicator section, which if we can see that, it's essentially, mine's probably closer to two feet long, but it's different colored fluorocarbon line joined by two tippet rings. And then below that, depending on the water I'm fishing in, I'll have my fluorocarbon clear leader all the way down below that. Now that could be anywhere from four to eight feet in length, depending on where I'm fishing. But this bit, that's what gives you the look. That's what gives you the indication that your nymph has been eaten. On my dry fly rod, I have a weight forward floating line, a tapered leader section, and that will go down to a tippet ring as well. And below that, I'll put whatever tippet I'm using for the particular water or the particular day. Not that it really matters, but the rods I was running are a four weight and a three weight, I believe. So pretty light gear, pretty small fish. So you don't really want to be lugging around a massive rod. For those not into fly fishing, fly rods do come in different weights. And obviously the higher the weight, the, the bigger the rod or the stronger or thicker or more powerful the rod is for different purposes from one weights and zero weight type rods for targeting really tiny water, really finicky little fish, right up to, you know, 10, 12 weight sort of things you'll use for tropical fishing for you know, massive giant trevally or marlin or these sort of things. Flies are personal preference and most fly fishermen carry a wide range of both dry and wet flies with them wherever they go. When you're nymphing, they do come in a variety of colors, weights, shapes and sizes. Now they'll depend on what you're trying to attract. And if you're using two nymphs on your nymph setup, which one might go on the top and the bottom. With my dry flies, I like to keep them really functional and nondescript. If you are into fly tying yourself and you wanna check out some people who tie some really cool stuff on YouTube, check out the Fly Stream channel. Craig Coltman ties some really cool, functional and local flies for Victoria and Southern Australia that I find really easy to tie and I find them really, really effective. I also like the way he goes through and explains the process of tying. I think he's been doing it a long time and he's really, really good at it. Another great resource is Tom Jarman's channel. Whilst he's an awesome fly fisherman and posts some stuff from all over the world, which is really, really cool. He also posts a lot of patterns that he ties himself. And I love the way he goes about it because he has that similar mindset. It's all about practicality. Flies are designed to be eaten by fish. So they might not necessarily last a long time. So if you can spend the least amount of time putting them together, as long as they're functional and they get eaten, then that's fantastic. That's one of the things I really like about Tom's tying. So check it out. Really easy patterns to tie and a wide variety of patterns on his channel. So for me, I'm gonna think about where I'm gonna go fishing next. And for you, I really hope your fishing is going fantastic and all of your outdoor activities are going along well. Don't forget to like or hit the thumbs up on the videos if you're enjoying the content. I'll keep posting more and more as I keep saying as we build the channel. And while you're at it, why not add yourself to those handful of subscribers I've got. It's a great encouragement for me to keep posting stuff to the channel and try a few different bits and pieces with the filming, adding a little bit to it each time. Hopefully making it more entertaining and more informative for you. I really hope you're getting outdoors this week. And as usual, keep your fishing up, stay happy, and I'll see you on the outside.